Welcome to the Greenway with Mac, a channel dedicated to active transportation. Today we are in the Emerald City, Seattle, Washington, where I'll show you what it is like riding on its streets. We came to town on Amtrak, so I thought this would be a fun and useful starting location. Go left one block to see this view of the soccer and football stadium. The baseball stadium is behind it, so this route will also show you how easy it is to access these venues without driving. For the most part, this trip will take 2nd Avenue North in a two-way protected bike lane. At Broad Street, we will make a left turn down to the waterfront and end at the Elliott Bay Trailhead. This waterfront greenway is covered in a separate video that I'll link at the end. I've separated them because this city tour is in the streets and crosses a lot of intersections, so I only recommend the trip for intermediate riders and above. The follow-up video passes the 880 test so use that one if you'll be riding with beginners. I probably could have just continued straight here for a block, but it's a one-way street in the wrong direction. There is a lot of room on that street, but Google sent me this way. We will be passing that opposite side in just a few seconds. I took a one-block detour to Occidental Square, which is a delightful car-free tree-lined plaza. There are cafes, totem poles, and a new play structure over on the left. The city occasionally hosts events here. Turn right on Washington, just for a couple of blocks. Since we are riding in the street, this section is for intermediate riders. Beginners should use the Elliott Bay Trail, which is separated from drivers. This is where we would have ended had we not taken the one-block detour. Turn left on second, and then you'll be in these protected bike lanes for everything but the very end of this trip. Pioneer Square is down to the left. Possibly my favorite thing from our visit was the underground tour, which started in Pioneer Square. I was fascinated by the history of the city and how they raised the buildings and its roads following a fire that destroyed the original settlement. And the guides are really funny. I'll share a link to the one that we did in the description. The bike lane itself was great. We were physically separated from traffic by curbs or large planters in most places. I also saw plenty of helpful signs. This trip is just under two miles with an elevation change of about 150 feet in both directions. Here is a map of the full ride that I did, which includes the follow-up video on the Elliott Bay Trail. I have a link to Strava in the description if you want a sneak peek at my future bike videos. We are now in the business and hotel district, and we are only about a mile from the stadiums, so it's not too bad of a walk or a ride if you're visiting the city for a sporting event. One block over on 3rd Street is a link light rail line that runs parallel to us until Pine Street. Sound Transit runs the link light rail, Sound Transit Express bus service, and the Sounder commuter rail. Bikes are free to bring on all three systems, but the number of them allowed is limited. We have taken Link to SeaTac Airport and Sounder to the Mukutil Ferry Terminal, and both experiences were great. I originally tried to record this video on an acoustic bike, but I was really struggling to go up the hill from the waterfront. I actually locked that one up and rented an electric line bike. Personally, I think a docked bike share is best because of how I've seen scooters and bikes used, abused, and scattered like litter in other cities. However, Seattle seems to have figured something out with the dockless bikes and scooters. In this video, you can see that there are many of them right next to the path and they are generally being used and stored as intended. I'm not sponsored by Lime, but I do like to give credit when it is due. What made the process even smoother is that you can use the Uber app to unlock your ride. They do make you take a road safety quiz prior to your first trip. According to People for Bikes, Seattle has ranked third best in the large city category for several years running. They recently completed about 10 miles of protected bike lanes in the city and have a plan for 100. While this is great, the city and its suburbs are quite sprawling. To fill in the gaps in this network, an organization called Seattle Greenways has formed a coalition of 16 neighborhoods. 
These groups are solving the challenges in their specific area with a goal of ungapping the map and working towards Vision Zero. If you are local, then join them to make active travel safer for everyone. Make a left here at Pike, and you're at Pike Place Market. The block to the right was recently pedestrianized in what I hope will become a trend down here by the tourist areas. The famous fish market is right there at the corner, under the sign. There isn't a very direct way to get down to the waterfront from here, but a pedestrian bridge is under construction, but you'll need to walk your bike. They have opened some of the walkway up to the train tracks, which is lined by a few restaurant patios. They are expected to finish the bridge in 2025. On Pine Street, they appeared close to finishing some of the protected lanes that run from Westlake Center. Westlake Center is a mall and is one of the two monorail stops, the other one being next to the Space Needle. Once we cross Stewart, we are in the Belltown neighborhood. William Nathaniel Bell, one of the early settlers of Seattle, owned the land claim here, and the neighborhood is named for him. Belltown is home to several universities, a ton of great places to eat, and several entertainment venues, including Seattle's oldest, the Moore Theater. Seattle Center is where you'll find a bunch of destinations like the Space Needle, Pacific Science Center, Chihuly Garden and Glass, Seattle Children's Museum, and Climate Pledge Arena. From here, I think the best way to get there is to take 4th Street, which is two streets to our right, and it looks like the best connection is to use Blanchard Street. Coming back, Bell Street looks like a slower street. 4th Street also has protected bike lanes like these, so you can take that as a parallel alternate route to our destination at Pier 70. I'm curious about which street is best for which direction, and I'd like to hear your thoughts. Like clockwork, I hit a red light every two blocks, so timing does not seem to work well in the direction that I rode. I had taken 4th Street down to record the video and experienced something similar. However, I feel this is the safer way to do this because we have the other side of the bike lane as a buffer, and we are facing traffic so we can see them if they are planning to turn in front of us. What do you think? Post your thoughts in the comments. The waterfront parallel to us on the left has been under construction since they tore down the Alaskan Way portion of Washington State Route 99. Part of the redevelopment is building bike lanes that will connect the destination of this video with the path that takes you all the way back to where we started. The waterfront is home to the ferry terminals and popular tourist destinations, and this path should make it a fun and safe way to get around without adding a car to the streets. It seems the biggest challenge remaining is how to implement a bike lane next to the cruise terminal. They have a flexible plan that will use a short bike detour when cruise passengers are arriving and departing. I added a few articles about this proposal in the description if you care to follow up. As a visitor, I still think there are too many cars down here, but there is still a lot to love about the area. It's certainly an improvement from this. Other cities like San Francisco have scored huge wins by tearing down waterfront highways, and I hope other cities follow these examples. Make a left on Broad Street to get down to the water. There is a one-block bike lane, but then you'll need to take the street for a couple of blocks. Be careful at the light because there's a bike signal, which I actually missed until I saw it while making these edits. This is where we drop over 100 feet in elevation and it's relatively steep. When planning your trip, just keep in mind that this change in elevation is pretty consistent along downtown Seattle's waterfront. Olympic Sculpture Park is a relaxing place to walk around and explore. The water is to the west, and I enjoyed coming here in the evening to watch the sunset. The Elliott Bay Trail is an off-street greenway that follows the waterfront and is a real gem, or should I say, emerald. Click the link above if you want to continue the journey on this fantastic all-ages trail. 
If you like learning what it's like to bike around the world, then subscribe to the channel and be sure to hit the like button. Thanks for coming along. I'll see you on the next city tour.